I have finally gotten a new Osteomancy Gloves Zotex for the Warlocks, and at first it didn't sound that all appealing to me. Snap grenades are good but very situational and have more of a place in PvP rather than PvE. Dustfield grenades are more supreme in design and have faster cooldown, and comparing the two, you have to ask yourself why would you want to use snap grenades over dust fields when they are literally better in design for near everything. And that was my mindset until I tried them out properly and they have honestly surprised me at how powerful they are with ad clearing and chain effects specifically. You're getting two snap grenades instead of the standard one and if your grenades hit a combatant square in the face you get a small portion back. They're pretty bare bones but the trick to making exotic good is using the stasis fragments and new stasis weapons to keep a flow of energy coming back to you and from here you can freely spam your grenades with massive effects. Don't knock it until you try it folks as this one is for the records. But you know what else is good for the records? You guys. So if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like, a sub and turn on your notifications as it does go a long way for me. For the subclass we will of course be using Shade Binder with the Combined Exotic. To make the new Exotic extremely powerful you will need to make sure you have a constant flow of energy coming back to you via shards, energy, whatever as the grenades have a much slower cooldown compared to dust fields. So I've gone with the following to help expand on this area. We have the Glacial Harvest aspect which will allow us to create shards every time we freeze a combatant. We then have Ice Flare Bolts which will expand on the tracking capabilities of snap grenades and shoot out additional ones to help. This fragment is ideal if you want to freeze mobile combatants at once and get the most out of your grenades. For fragments we have the Whispers of Durance which will extend our freeze capabilities on combatants, Whispers of Shards which will give us a grenade cooldown the moment we destroy a stasis glacier, Whispers of Fissures for increased shatter damage and Whispers of Rending for increased kinetic damage on stasis crystals or frozen combatants. This here, as shown, will be the main backbone for making the subclass and the grenades flow freely as much as you like. Every time we freeze a combatant we are able to get multiple ones at once and also produce enough shards that it will refill our melee ability but also grant us energy to our other key areas. At the same time we will also get an increased kinetic damage against frozen combatants which is great if you have the new hacky scout rifle with headstone as not only are you doing extra damage but you can also trigger headstone which will overall kick in whispers of shards and so forth. It's simply effective at what it does and even if you have low stats, as long as you have the basics covered then you can fill in the vest from there. However, it's also important to know what key mods and stats will also play a big part in the build. We have 100 discipline cooldown as we want to make for sure we are using our grenades as often as we can. We also have 60 strength which also plays a part in creating shards but this can be lowered if you think having such a high stat is not necessary. Next we have elemental armament which will allow us to create stasis walls upon stasis weapon kills. A font of wisdom for the plus 50 in intellect cooldown. Font of might for the 25% weapon buff for our stasis weapons. Elemental shards for converting shards into walls for us. And lastly elemental time dilation which will extend the duration of any time based elemental wells. This should give you a good idea as to what you need to aim for when covering stats and mods used. Of course this can be easily changed to have less discipline used if you don't have enough available or if you want to swap out elemental armaments for another elemental time dilation mod. We have the main bases covered via the subclass so what you pick next for the loadout will be down to personal choice. Just make sure you have the key stats covered before moving on. Now weapons are very simple to cover and use as is very low maintenance. For example my primary is the Perseus Deep Scout Rifle with Shoot to Loot and Headstone. Both perks are very good at their job with Shoot to Loot allowing you to collect ammo from a far off distance and Headstone simply allows us to create stasis crystals upon kills made. This is a matchmaking heaven for the build for a number of reasonings. Firstly, Headstone on Scout Rifle has been a long time coming for many since scouts have an easier time connecting their shots via critical hits so having a scout rifle with a perk is not to be missed. Secondly, as a hacking weapon, their Aldrin perk allows users to do increased damage to status crystals so combine that with Whispers of Rending for increased damage against status crystals as well and you'll be able to one shot them. Thirdly, hacky weapons are pretty cool so you should get a few for safekeeping. Although the stats on the weapon isn't great, ideally you want to have one that has more stability to it so you can fire more smoothly. Now if that's not the case and you don't want this weapon then the crate AR is another perfect weapon to have if you like to spray and pray instead rather than being accurate. For our secondary I'm using the four Bevan's grenade launcher with genesis and chain reaction and this is from the raid so not everyone will have this weapon yet. 
If you do have one but don't have the following perks, then keep it still as you'll want a weapon for this specific build. As it is a wave frame, it will make it easier for you to take out large groups of combatants in one go compared to anything else. Although, the only issue you have to deal with with the weapon is the odd angles you fire it at. Except from that, the weapon is ideal if you want to take out frozen combatants within a few seconds. Now, if you manage to get one with a chain reaction perk as shown, then you'll be in for a treat for the extra damage it will pull off for you. Alternatively, the Explosive Personality Grenade Launcher from the PsyOps Activity Team is another good option to have if you're looking for a good standard waveframe to use. For Heavy now, we have the Palomaya B Rocket Launcher with Ambitious Assassin and Explosive Light. A very powerful Heavy that can do some great damage once you get your Explosive Light stacks at max. Ideally, having any Heavy here, including Exotics, is good as nothing specific is required. But as we are using the Harmonic Siphon mod with Stasis Weapons to help produce orbs, it's definitely something to keep in mind while creating the build. Within your stats, you'll want to focus as much ample support towards your discipline so you can have a high uptime with freezing combatants. Now, as mentioned earlier, we need to make sure that our discipline is at the highest stat of arm because of how much slower it is to use snap grenades compared to dust fields. We have ours at a relatively good area and speed, and other mods used such as Elemental Shards will greatly help push the stat even further. I would also recommend you add in the Absolution perk for its effects on covering all abilities in terms of recovery when active, and the Distribution perk for the same similar effect. These standards are basic. Once Discipline is covered, your next coverage will be Strength, and having it around 50 to 60 is the sweet spot you only need for the setup. Remember, with shards being created, these will help get our abilities back relatively quickly with no effort involved. You can even have this as low as 40 and you'll still be in a good spot nonetheless. This goes the same for intellect stat as well at 30. Although using supers are highly recommended here, you do not need to invest in this area anymore as simply having the frontal wizard mod is enough. You're getting plus 50 for a few seconds to the following stat, and although slow, it saves you ample time in putting points into the following area. Lastly, do be sure to put some points in recovery as well, as that will play a big part if you decide to use it in end game content. Left over wise, we have Harmonic Siphon, which will allow us to create orbs of power, Silent Forging, which will increase the duration of Hacky Breach Armor's origin traits, Rocket Scavenger, which will increase rockets, and Utility Kickstart, which will give us a small boost of energy to our class energy the moment we use it. Now, as I've covered the mods, weapons, and perks we are using, here's what it's all like compiled into one. For Head, we have Recovery. Sonic Forging 2, Harmonic Siphon, the Element of Armors mod, Arm, we have Discipline, a Fastball and Frontal Wisdom mod, Chest, we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, Concussive Dampener, and Frontal Might mod, Leg, we have Discipline, Absolution, Rock Scavenger, Element of Shards mod, Bond, we have Maya Discipline, Distribution, Utility Kickstart, and Element of Time Dilation mod. An absolutely fantastic exotic, but an even more fantastic build you may want to keep for future use. This build is similar to how Eye of Another World and Stasis Tours acts, which means if you want to freeze everything one after another and keep getting energy back, then this is a build you'll fully enjoy. To break it down, once you throw your grenades and it connects to a combatant, all you need to do from here is use your secondary to finish, or use your primary with the headstone perk and trigger its effects so you can get your second grenade back within seconds. And this can be repeated as many times as you like as long as you net the kill and all the effects on hand. So in a simple loop, throw your grenades, freeze targets, use primary to create more glacial crystals, destroy, set crystals, for grenade regen buff, repeat. Now I will say stasis turrets will always be better since they can cover ground more quickly and you can just throw multiple ones in one area and do something else while they cover you. However, I can see this build being useful in endgame content such as raids or nightfalls as long as you're fully gear prepped and not against any major flying combatants. It has the same appeal as stasis turrets as you can cover ground pretty wide as well and once it connects with a combatant then its effects will trigger the ice flare bolts aspect and can cover more ground within a few seconds. This is handy if you're in a small area on a master difficulty nightfall as this can be a pain at times when facing multiple high level combatants at once and not having enough to slow them down and give you room to breathe. The exotics are also very generous in terms of how much energy they give back to you the moment they connect with a target, with around 50% being granted back. Once you add in the Whispers of Shards effects, you'll pretty much have a full grenade back within a few seconds. With this being the case, I can see room for improvements being made to where we can take out Glacier Harvest and add in the Stasis Turrets if we know the cooldown rate is going to be very high. Only thing to note is that you'll lose our Elemental Shards effects, 
but this can be swapped out for powerful wells and seek more mods instead to make up the loss. I rate this exotic very highly when built around it right, and you really need to lean into the grenades if you want to make full use out of them. Although many may scoff at the idea of using them, they do a really good job at stopping multiple combatants at once, and how you proceed from there is honestly down to you. Overall, I recommend you get the exotic for PvE if you enjoy spicing up your stasis life, and also recommend you use the following build if you want to make the full most out of them, as honestly, it really is groundbreaking. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and also turn on your notifications so you never miss out on future content. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all next one.